are going to check the path of raw water. And, uh, and uh, what happens when I have a lack of uh, raw water in the exhaust manifold? What happens when uh, here in the exhaust gas temperature sensor, I have an alarm? Uh, that indicates that uh, the flow of raw water is not good. Uh, this is the path of raw water. Number one is, is the seacock. The seacock, and after that, the strainer. And after that, raw water pump. And from the raw water pump into the heat exchanger. Uh, okay, where it should be located? This and this. Below the water line. Below the water line. If the raw water pump is located in the limit, of the water line or over the water line, what I need in the installation Siphon. of this engine? Siphon. I need no. anti siphon. Anti -siphon. Where? No, Where? Look at this. Salt water coming from the raw water pump enter here, and after that, the salt water enter here in the elbow of the exhaust. If, if my raw water pump is in the limit or below, I need an anti siphon here. Here, in this point, in this point, in between the output of the heat exchanger and the input of the elbow. Anybody follow me? How much should be the distance of the anti siphon here? 12 to 18 inches. 12 inches over the water line, minimum. If it's higher, it's better. There is another anti siphon device. Where is the other anti siphon device? You see the muffler, no? The exhaust gases enter here, enter in the muffler, and the muffler should be out and finish over the water line. Yeah. Not in the limit, not below. Okay, look at this. Go over the water line, minimum 12 inches, and finish over the water line. Like the picture that you have on the screen. All right? Great? What's that? Two anti siphons. One here. And uh, other one over there. Excuse me. I check both engines in my in my boat, and both of them the hose is pretty close here. Indicate what? The the whole engine is. The engine is over the water line, and I don't need anti side. Ah, in the generators, both of them the hose are because the generators are over the water line. You said Look, both the water. The point line. the point of reference is this the point where the raw water is mixed with the gases, that point. Look, the gases are here, and the raw water is here. And this is the point of reference. This is the point that you need mark with a Sharpie, and this is the point of reference. This is the point of reference. Good? Yeah. How I know inside of the engine room where is the level of the water line outside? How can I know that? You remember the stuffing box, guys? Yeah, those those uh, fittings in the stuffing box to check the level of water if the water is entering? Mm -hmm. You can put a clear hose on those fittings and you see where is the level of the water line. And you can mark the, the level of water line in the walls. This is the point of reference, Chris. This is the point of reference. Ah, my engine, this point, is over the water line. Your engine is considered over the water line. And you don't need anti siphon. You put a, a, a short hose here. Look. That's the raw water pump. The raw water pump should be located below the water line. What happens if the, water, the raw water pump is located in the limit of the water line or a little higher? In general, no problem. But uh, if the distance is too much, mm -hmm. more than five inches, in my opinion, uh -huh. you need you need an extra, extra raw water pump electrical. For example, this raw water pump is located 15 inches over the water line. My generator is too high because this is the only area where I can install the generator. It's too high with respect to the level of the water line. What is my recommendation? My recommendation is in between the raw water pump and, uh, and uh, the strainer or seacock, cut it and install an electric raw water pump. 
and the electric raw water pump connected to the how you power it that electric pump only think in the harness of the engine and think how you want how you want to activate that pump i have a question pay attention if i connect to the ignition switch it's it's good because uh, that electric pump will be running all the time if the engine is running but this double flow is the flow of the mechanical pump plus this pump. Uh, I prefer only in preheat. In preheat, I bring water over there and I start the engine. And now the engine starts, the impeller have water and continues suction. Okay, so you and, and this one will pump. be disconnected. You use it as a primer pump then? Correct. Basically, only to prime. Okay, only okay. to prime. All right, so and you can create different mechanisms yeah. to prime. With an external button only to prime fresh yeah. water, eh, sorry, salt water. Eh, so you you start the engine, the engine is running, and you disconnect that pump. No more pump. It's clear this, and it's clear this. Guys, this is the, this, that part looks simple, but it's not simple. It's where the people make a lot of mistakes installing engines and generators. Uh, it's uh, the, the consideration about the water line. No? This is, the, this is the critical point. You remember in the big caterpillar where is located that critical point? Can, can we check again? Where is located the critical point? Where? Show with your fingers, exactly. Can you see the elbow? Where? In what part of the elbow? Exactly, that point. Can you point it again? In that point, because the raw water are mixed with the gases in that point. Okay, if that point is in the limit of the water line or a little over you need anti-siphon where should be located the anti-siphon show to me where i need install the anti-siphon look at this you cut it this hose and you install one hose higher and finish here in this one everybody follow me okay uh in that engine show to me where is the critical point you see the critical point guys because the raw water is mixed with the gases. No? Ah, okay. If that point is in the limit or over the water line, I need anti-siphon between, 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 between this hose in the output of the heat exchanger and after that over there. Okay. That's, that's clear, guys? Yeah. Okay, guys. I have a problems of a lack of raw water in my engine and uh, step number one if i have the exhaust gas temperature sensor activated step number one disconnect this hose and check if the water is coming in if i disconnect the hose i open the valve and the water no enter what is the solution and yeah, check no, plastic bag or something yeah. no okay i have water over there now i need check strainer strainer how do you check the strainer you look at the glass you check the strainer yeah. ah of course you close the valve you open the basket you clean the basket and you verify that is clean and you disconnect the output of the of the strainer, you open the valve and you verify that water is coming out. Be careful with this gasket. The gasket located here, the rubber gasket located here in the cup. When you put it back and you open the, the valve, the water enter. The recommendation is start the, the engine. When the engine is running, you verify bubbles here. If you have bubbles, you lose the cap, you open the cap, you spill water, and, and now you tight again. And you verify oh, a little more bubbles. You move the cap, spill water, and you tight again. And now, no bubbles, and the engine is running. Okay, now you stop the engine again. No problem. Good? This is the process. Try to keep this crystal clean. Solid. Solid water. Yeah. Because it's easy to see the bubbles. Oh. Yeah. How many strainers like this you have in a typical boat? You should have one per each engine, right? One per each engine. Yeah. 
and additionally other four with generators yeah engines and generators and other four air condition and other four water makers every seacock every seacock you have an strainer the strainer could be metallic like this or plastic if it's metallic should be should be bonding. should be bonding. connected to the bonding and the bonding to the sink mandatory for that reason all of them they have a special screws for the bonding conductor should be bonded because it's metallic all right okay i have water here i have water here and now i need check i need check here what is this the raw water pump this is the scoop where it should be facing Bow or forward? Forward. Bow. Forward. Bow. Forward. Bow. Okay. And uh, look at this for the screw for the bonding. All right. Right. Don't forget, open and close minimum once per week the valves. Never use a pipe wrench to move that one because you break the handle. If you you break the handle, finito. You need to put the boat out of the water to replace the strain. Okay, guys? Periodically. Never, never disconnect the hose and add it a WD-40. No. No. Only, only, you can add it a soapy water. But uh, no, no oil. No WD-40. Because the WD-40, in contact with the salt water, create crystals. And the crystals crack the metal and you have leaks. All right, and uh, this is the raw water pump. This is the raw water pump, and on the raw water pump, you have the impeller. And you have the video that I have in the book about the service on the raw water pump. How to replace the impeller, the, the, the procedure to replace the impeller. In that video, I explain with a lot of details that process, the tool used to remove the impeller, Never, never use a flat screwdriver because you damage the housing. Be careful when you remove uh, the raw water pump with that half moon, the metallic half moon in the bottom, because this, this crescent metal is the area where the pressure is created. If you lose that piece of metal on the bilge, you put it back the impeller, the pump is running, the, the engine is running, but uh, the, the, the pump is not producing pressure because you lose that metal, okay? Be careful with that. Always, always, when you remove the plate, when you remove the plate, clean the plate with a sandpaper, fine grade, and, 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 and remove that oxidation in the middle. When you put in back the plate, add it, add it grease or silicone in the middle. Immediately, you put in back the impeller and you start the engine again, Step number one is start the engine and touch with your hand that plate. Normally, immediately you start the engine, the plate become a little hot, but immediately the temperature goes down when the water enters. If the temperature continue up, up, up in the plate, stop the engine. If not, in 30 seconds you burn the impeller and you destroy the impeller. 